Law 36 Disdain things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. Judgment By acknowledging a petty problem, you give it existence and credibility. The more attention you pay an enemy, the stronger you make him. And a small mistake is often made worse and more visible when you try to fix it. It is sometimes best to leave things alone. If there is something you want but cannot have, show contempt for it. The less interest you reveal, the more superior you seem. Observance of the Law In the year 1527, King Henry VIII of England decided he had to find a way to get rid of his wife, Catherine of Aragon. Catherine had failed to produce a son, a male heir, who would ensure the continuance of his dynasty, and Henry thought he knew why. He had read in the Bible the passage, And if a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. Before marrying Henry, Catherine had married his older brother Arthur, but Arthur had died five months later. Henry had waited an appropriate time, then had married his brother's widow. Catherine was the daughter of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, and by marrying her, Henry had kept alive a valuable alliance. Now, however, Catherine had to assure him that her brief marriage with Arthur had never been consummated. Otherwise, Henry would view their relationship as incestuous and their marriage as null and void. Catherine insisted that she had remained a virgin through her marriage to Arthur, and Pope Clement VII supported her by giving his blessing to the union, which he could not have done had he considered it incestuous. Yet, after years of marriage to Henry, Catherine had failed to produce a son, and in the early 1520s she had entered menopause. To the king, this could only mean one thing. She had lied about her virginity. Their union was incestuous, and God had punished them. There was another reason why Henry wanted to get rid of Catherine. He had fallen in love with a younger woman, Anne Boleyn. Not only was he in love with her, but if he married her, he could still hope to sire a legitimate son. The marriage to Catherine had to be annulled, for this, however, Henry had to apply to the Vatican, but Pope Clement would never annul their marriage. By the summer of 1527, rumors spread throughout Europe that Henry was about to attempt the impossible, to annul his marriage against Clement's wishes. Catherine would never abdicate, let alone voluntarily enter a nunnery, as Henry had urged her. But Henry had his own strategy. He stopped sleeping in the same bed with Catherine, since he considered her his sister-in-law, not his lawful wife. He insisted on calling her Princess Dowager of Wales, her title as Arthur's widow. Finally, in 1531, he banished her from court and shipped her off to a distant castle. The Pope ordered him to return her to court on pain of excommunication, the most severe penalty a Catholic could suffer. Henry not only ignored this threat, he insisted that his marriage to Catherine had been dissolved, and in 1533 he married Anne Boleyn. Clement refused to recognize the marriage, but Henry did not care. He no longer recognized the Pope's authority and proceeded to break with the Roman Catholic Church, establishing the Church of England in its stead, with the king as the head of the new church. And so... Not surprisingly, the newly formed Church of England proclaimed Anne Boleyn, England's rightful queen. The Pope tried every threat in the book, but nothing worked. Henry simply ignored him. Clement fumed. No one had ever treated him so contemptuously. Henry had humiliated him, and he had no power of recourse. Even excommunication, which he constantly threatened, but never carried out would no longer matter. Catherine, too, felt the devastating sting of Henry's disdain. She tried to fight back, but in appealing to Henry, her words fell on deaf ears, and soon they fell on no one's. 
Isolated from the court, ignored by the king, mad with anger and frustration, Catherine slowly deteriorated and finally died in January of 1536 from a cancerous tumor of the heart. Interpretation When you pay attention to a person, the two of you become partners of sorts, each moving in step to the actions and reactions of the other. In the process, you lose your initiative. It is a dynamic of all interactions. By acknowledging other people, even if only to fight with them, you open yourself to their influence. Had Henry locked horns with Catherine, he would have found himself mired in endless arguments that would have weakened his resolve and eventually worn him down. Had he set out to convince Clement to change his verdict on the marriage's validity or tried to compromise and negotiate with him, he would have gotten bogged down in Clement's favorite tactic, playing for time, promising flexibility, but actually getting what popes always got, their way. Henry would have none of this. He played a devastating power game. Total disdain. By ignoring people, you cancel them out. This unsettles and infuriates them. But since they have no dealings with you, there is nothing they can do. This is the offensive aspect of the law. Playing the card of contempt is immensely powerful, for it lets you determine the conditions of the conflict. The war is waged on your terms. This is the ultimate power pose. You are the king, and you ignore what offends you. Watch how this tactic infuriates people. Half of what they do is to get your attention, and when you withhold it from them, they flounder in frustration. Keys to Power If choosing to ignore enhances your power, it follows that the opposite approach commitment and engagement often weakens you. By paying undue attention to a puny enemy, you look puny, and the longer it takes you to crush such an enemy, the larger the enemy seems. When Athens set out to conquer the island of Sicily in 415 BC, a giant power was attacking a tiny one. Yet by entangling Athens in a long, drawn-out conflict, Syracuse, Sicily's most important city-state, was able to grow in stature and confidence. Finally, defeating Athens, it made itself famous for centuries to come. In recent times, President John F. Kennedy made a similar mistake in his attitude to Fidel Castro of Cuba. His failed invasion at the Bay of Pigs in 1961 made Castro an international hero. When you are attacked by an inferior, Deflect people's attention by making it clear that the attack has not even registered. Look away, or answer sweetly, showing how little the attack concerns you. Similarly, when you yourself have committed a blunder, the best response is often to make less of your mistake by treating it lightly. Remember, the powerful responses to niggling, petty annoyances, and irritations are contempt and disdain. Never show that something has affected you or that you are offended. That only shows you have acknowledged a problem. Contempt is a dish that is best served cold and without affection. <laughs>